So, neutering terminology. To neuter is to remove the sexual organs in both male and female. So when you say neuter, you're talking about both male and female. Okay? Um, whereas talking about castration, we're referring to the male. And usually, usually in this country, uh, when you talk about castration, you are physically removing the testicles. Yep, so you're actually taking testicles away. Okay? Um, cryptorchid is another little term that we have for dogs with only one testicle. Okay, so crypt means hidden. Orchid is um, testicle, so it's like a hidden testicle, so to speak. Okay, so in very, very rare uh, occasions, you get things like monorchid, whereby there's only actually one testicle. Very, very rare. Very, very rare. It's usually a cryptorchid. It's hidden somewhere that uh, we have not found it yet. So very rare. And very, very rare as you get polyorchid. More than two testicles. Also very, very rare. Okay, so usually if you just see one that's descended, because in males, in dogs, uh, in that species, the testicles are descended, so they're out of the body. And usually, usually you see that at sort of um, five months of age, six months of age. Sometimes they may be a little bit tighter and you can definitely see them as what, well, eight, nine months of age, so to speak. Uh, so you can see them descended. And when you feel only one, usually it's a cryptorchid, which means somewhere is hidden. Uh, which I'll come back to that in a bit, but yeah, just to have a little term. So when says, somebody says about cryptorchid, they're talking about just one testicle, the other one is hidden, hence the word crypt. Okay. Vasectomy. Okay, so this is, we hear that in human terms. Okay, so um, going for the snip, so to speak. Okay, what they do over there is they tie back that the tube that passes the sperm from the testicle to the penis to the outside world. So they just tie that tube back, so they actually don't castrate. The animal. The testicles are still there, they still produce the sexual organs, uh, it's just the tubes are tied back. Very, very uncommon in dogs in UK as well. Okay, the more sort of a common uh, application or rather a uh, relevation to this is in ferrets, where, where they do vas vasectomies. Spay, okay, now we move on to the females. Okay, so when we say we spay, we are always referring to the female dog. So you don't spay a male dog. You neuter a male dog, you castrate a male dog, but you spay a female dog. Does it make sense? You can neuter both male and female, but you castrate male, spay female. Yeah? So there's, it's quite contentious of how to spell it. In UK, S-P-A-E. In America, S-P-E. Sorry, uh, S-P-E-Y. UK is S-P-A-Y. So uh, either way, they pronounce the same. Then you have two different sort of uh, terminology over there. One is uh, overhysterectomy and overectomy. Overhysterectomy, or OVH for short, it's uh, when you're removing the ovaries and the uterus. Okay. Whereas overectomy is just removing the ovaries, leaving the uterus in situ. And there is uh, different sort of uh, applications for that as well, which we'll explain a little bit further on. Before I move on, any questions about terminology at this moment in time? And um, I forgot to mention, one reason why we took your emails is because we'll be sending you all the notes. So whatever is shown over here will be sent to you, so don't worry about writing things down. But feel free to write things that's not on the slide. Yeah. Let's talk about cats. Cat castration. Okay, so pros. No more kittens. Stop spraying. Stop territorial marking. Stop wandering, decreased chance of road traffic accidents. Okay, uh, before I go further, let's talk about this. So, what we have found is that studies have shown 77% of road traffic accidents that result in a fatality, they are usually two years old, younger, unneutered. Okay, so with a huge statistic like this, you can almost say that, okay, it's been run over, it's dead. Okay, it's probably not castrated. It's that sort of thing. Okay, because what happens is that they feel the need to roam. They want to roam, they're more adventurous, and you know, and, and that is why they are more prone to get into such accidents. And that is, that's why, to a certain extent, how we can warn the owners, or not, we can, warn, we can inform the owners to say that, look, if you want to reduce your chance of your dog, your, your cat getting run over, get it castrated, literally. It's not being harsh, it's actually true, because that is a statistics. Yep, so that's that. Uh, no more kittens. Obviously, we do not want any more unwanted uh, kittens out there. We love cats, but not unwanted ones that need caring as animal distress. We'll tell you more about it. 
stop spraying because they love to mark the territory. They're cats, they're male. So if you don't get them castrated, um, most, a lot of owners, they have talked about spraying either in the house or on the furniture. If they get something new, they get, get a new potted plant, then they start spraying as well because that is just their natural behavior of marking territory. And certainly castrated cats have much, much less incidence of doing that. It is uh, it's very, very rare that uh, I see customers telling me that what to do if my cat stops from spraying when it's been castrated already. Okay, um, and we just discuss about stop wandering, so they, they don't go as far. They don't feel the need to travel as far to gain their territory like lions in Africa, so to speak. <laughs> All right, the cons. Okay, the, the downside of castration: no more kittens. So just a reminder: castration is taking away the testicles. Okay, it's not something that is reversible. It's a one-way ticket. So it's not something like okay, get it castrated at one year old or you know five months of age, then six years old and said, actually, you are quite a good cat. I'd like to sire kittens from you. Uh, one way ticket. <laughs> it doesn't really work that way. All right. So uh, no more kittens. And uh, certainly there's a general anesthetic risk, um, as all anesthetics do, because um, I believe in UK, while I'm studying anyway, we do them under general anesthetic right now. I don't think they did it in the past, but there we go. So there's a the there, there general anesthetic risk. Like, there was a very good thing I keep hearing that people talk about. I was like, how true is that? I have no idea. <laughs> so, um, so there's a general anesthetic risk. Um, touch wood, I've not lost one under general anesthetic before, but nonetheless, there's always a risk involved. Yep. The procedure itself is fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, I was never, when I was a vet student, you know, I sort of uh, said, okay, castration, like uh, how, what, what needs to be prepared? And when the nurse said that, oh, yeah, you're doing, you'll be doing it in 45 seconds, I'm like, what? So, uh, but it is quite quick. It is quite a simple, straightforward procedure. Yeah. So I'm not too concerned with procedure. It's usually the anesthetic risk itself. <laughs> Any questions about cat castration? Okay. Cat spay. Okay. So pros. No more unwanted kittens. So a little kitty cat, they can be producing up to three or even four liters of kittens a year if ungod if left unchecked and each litter can be between anywhere between two to five kittens usually about four ish so to speak so if you imagine let's take an average of three litters or four that's 12 and they can actually get pregnant while they're still nursing so that's happened before as well so they have a little kittens and they're nursing so usually they're weaned off at uh, eight weeks old and by the time they're eight weeks they're pregnant again for the next set so it is not as though people think that oh yeah they're nursing then you know they won't get pregnant but they can actually get pregnant during that nursing period so they can easily produce you know pff, we're talking about 12 kittens times maybe five years 60 kittens and i'm talking about that's very very conservative uh, conservative uh, number it can certainly be more than that so no more unwanted kittens no more calling when in season. It can be quite loud. I'm not sure. Uh, how, how many people have heard the cats calling during season before? It, is, um, it sounds almost painful, <laughs> and, but it is uh, very obvious. It's very loud and certainly owners, they have talked about how can I stop my cat from calling? Well, it's spring, you get it spayed, so to speak. But, you know, they, they, and also just to, I'm not going too much into it, so anatomy and physiology, but they're what we call induced ovulators which means that they, don't, they can be not ovulating, which means producing eggs from the ovaries, until they're induced. So everything is okay until they see a male tomcat, then spring comes, then they start producing eggs, so to speak. Okay? Uh, whereas, uh, unlike a bitch, which usually get into season sort of between, uh, usually every six months, but anything between sort of four to 10 months. So that is a cycle. Whereas cats are induced ovulators. So nothing happens until spring, then everybody goes happy. <laughs> yeah. So the no more calling when in season. Uh, it does have reduced risk of memory tumors. Okay, it does have huge, huge re reduction of risk of memory tumors. Uh, it is uh, as high as 70% of entire female cats would get memory tumors in the end because the uh, memory tumors is usually stimulated by estrogen. And that is where the ovaries produce. So certainly uh, entire cats, entire female cats, they are more um, sort of uh, um, uh, troubled with memory tumors. Um, and in another topic, another time, I can discuss more about tumors and what's the significance between a female cat getting tumor and a male dog getting uh, and a female dog getting tumor and things like that. But yeah, 
cons no more kittens same story one way ticket okay it's not as though you want to spay then you can reverse again all these sort of things and same again general anesthetic risk uh, as with all anesthetic the procedure at itself is i in my opinion um moderate it's not completely risk-free you are going to the abdomen and you are looking for the ovaries and the uh, uterus uh, but it is really really not that tricky because of the small space over there that there isn't that many organs that you can sort of go wrong in my experience <laughs> so uh, yes so the procedure is moderate I, I wouldn't say it as easy I wouldn't say it as totally complicated yeah <coughs> When you know it's time to spay your kitten. <laughs> when they're using scratching force in all sorts of different ways. <laughs> okay, so the question, when to do it? Okay, so this is a very good question and usually there isn't a lot of contention with the answer of this. Um, most people say as soon as possible. I know in Utrecht University and most universities in America, they do it when they're three months old. Certainly cats protection in this country do it at three months old just because it is better getting off neutered than to go somewhere not neutered than get more kittens again. So usually my advice is three months old for a, this is where I get a little bit biased, for a customer or client owned cat, it could be a little bit harsh because it's 12 weeks, that's where the second vaccination is done and that's where they're just purely bonding and the thought of them having to go through surgery at that point in time can be a little bit tricky. So we usually talk about sort of five months old uh, but before, certainly before they sort of go out, and certainly we have that, that little window between three months and five months, the cat goes out and gets pregnant. <laughs> so some owners, you know, they, they, they will be a little bit more fastidious, say, I don't want to spay it, I'm going to keep it in until I get it spayed, then let out again. So it all depends from owner to owner. And certainly some owners say, I don't mind, they are going to be farm cats, I want them to be out as soon as possible and catch the rats. So, but when they're about 1.7 kilo, 1.8 kilo, in my opinion, if in, under my hands, I'm happy to spay them. It's all weight dependent as well. Um, for obvious reasons, because um, smaller, if they're much smaller than that, the risk may be slightly higher. Yeah, so um, there isn't really a, it's not like uh, female dogs whereby there is a after the season sort of thing. Uh, so for cats, we just do them as soon as possible. And even if they're having a litter, uh, they'll keep them in. And when they wean off at eight weeks, a uh, week eight for the kittens, then we get the female spayed as well, because we have seen that little window there before they win off, then they get pregnant again, <laughs> and they're on to the next set. <laughs>